All right, let's go ahead and turn to Proverbs chapter 3. Proverbs chapter 3. In regards to our tithes and our offerings this evening, I want to just encourage us with this word um, about now, but we're about to step over into New Year, so, so I want to encourage us with this word about a better New Year. Amen. We've been talking about our best days are ahead of us, not behind us. And so this is just an encouragement for us this evening. Starting in verse 1. It says, My son, do not forget my law, but let your heart keep my commands. For length of days and long life and peace they will add to you. So we see here, this is David writing to Solomon, and, and we can see this is God encouraging us. Okay? Uh, he says, first of all, he says, don't forget my law. Remember my word. Remember my word. Right? Don't forget the word. Remember my word and what? And keep my commands. Remember my word and do it. Remember my word and be doers. Amen? Remember my word and do it. And what will it do? Well, it says then, then um, what will it do? For, long, for length of days and long life and peace they will add to you. Now, the word peace is the Hebrew word shalom. And shalom means, I've got it written down here in Haggai, so I'm going to jump over here. The word shalom means this, safety, wellness, happiness, rest, health, prosperity, favor, wholeness, and restitution. That's, that's the Hebrew word shalom. That's what it means. It means safety, wellness, happiness, rest, health, prosperity, favor, wholeness, and restitution. That's what we all want. That's the good life. Shalom. And he says here, if we remember his word and we are doers of his word, then uh, this is what will happen. Length of days and long life and peace they will add to us. It'll, it'll add shalom to us if we remember the word and we do the word. Now it says length of days. Now this is not the only time in this chapter that the word length of days is used. Matter of fact, the word length of days, that phrase is used in verse 16. It says length of days is in her right hand and in her left hand riches and honor. Many years ago when I read this verse, the first thing that came to mind at that, at that time was time freedom and financial freedom. Time, freedom, and financial freedom. Length of days is in her right hand. In her left hand, riches and honor. How does it come? We remember his word. We're doers of his word. It says, for length of days and long life and peace or shalom, they will add to you. Verse 3. Let, let not mercy and truth forsake you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the table, tablet of your heart. And so... We will find favor and high esteem or good success in the sight of God and mankind. So we need to hold to mercy and truth. Hold to mercy. Hold to truth. As we hold to mercy and truth, he says here, that we will find favor and good success in the sight of God and the sight of people. Glory to God. Verse 5, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him for he will direct your paths. So interestingly, as we, as we remember His Word, and we're doers of His Word, and we hold to mercy and truth, it's going to require us to trust in the Lord. To trust in the Lord. Not just to lean to our own understanding. Now that doesn't, that, that's not to say that our understanding is bad, it's just it means that our understanding is limited. Understanding is that we only know so much. God knows everything. And so when He instructs us to do something, when His Word instructs us to do something, then we need to, what? Remember His Word and do His Word. We need to be doers of the Word. We need to be doers of the Word because we trust Him, not because we necessarily understand why He's telling us to do it. Amen? Because sometimes He's not going to share all the details. That's a step of faith. We take the step and we figure out all of a sudden it's like, oh, 
that's why you said that. Oh, that's why you instructed that. Oh, that's why. Right? We kind of get the picture afterwards. So, he, he lets us know here that we need to trust in the Lord with all our hearts, lean not to our own understanding, and in all our ways acknowledge Him. We're always acknowledging Him, always acknowledging His Word, always acknowledging what He says, acting on what He says, and He said that He will direct our paths. So trusting in the Lord does not mean that we do nothing. Right? We just sit back on the couch with our iced tea and, you know, turn the TV on. And... No, no. Trusting in the Lord is going to require us to take action. Because He's going to direct our paths. He's going to direct our steps. He's going to make smooth. So we're going to move in a direction that seems like we is very crooked. We're going to move in a direction that seems very dark. We don't know where we're going. We, but but he's, going to, he's going to straighten things out. He's going, to, he's going to align some things. He's going to put things together. He's going to help us. He's going to make a way. Scripture tells us he'll even make a way where there is no way. He's going to make a road in the wilderness. Rivers in the desert. He says, I want to do a new thing. So, it's going to require action, us moving and taking steps in the direction that he is showing and leading us. Verse 7, do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. Interesting. We need to put our trust in him and not be wise in our own eyes. He's our source. He's our help. He knows everything, and we are limited. So we're not supposed to be putting our trust in ourselves. We're to put our trust in Him. And then he says, fear the Lord and depart from evil. This, this phrase is... This phrase is done in a certain sequence because it's not possible to just... Just depart from evil. It's not enough to just fear not. It's not enough to just don't do the lusts of the flesh. Matter of fact, the New Testament says, walk in the Spirit and you won't fulfill the lusts of the flesh. This scripture says, fear the Lord and depart from evil. So we can't just depart from evil. Because if you're going to depart from evil, you have to go somewhere else. So you can't just depart and go nowhere. So the instruction is to fear the Lord. Now, the word fear means to reverence, respect, and to honor. Reverence, respect, and honor the Lord. But the Hebrew word for fear can also be translated see. See. In other words, we need to be looking at Him. We need to be following Him. We need to be focused on Him and as we do that, we will depart from evil. So our focus is not departing from evil. Our focus is Him. And as our focus is on Him, we will automatically depart from evil. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? So, uh, don't be wise in your own eyes. Fear, reverence, respect, and see the Lord. Focus on Him and depart from evil. Verse 8, what will it do? It will be health to your flesh and strength to your bones. Health to our bodies. It will produce health in our bodies and strength for our bones. Now strong bones are not brittle bones. Strong bones are not just hard bones. Strong bones actually flex. Strong bones flex. That's what helps them keep them from breaking. They flex. Strong, healthy bones. Flexible. This is talking about having our, ourself healed and youthfully renewed from the top of our heads to the soles of our feet. Amen? Yes, amen. Thank you. Ah, verse 9. So honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of your income or your increase. And so the word honor means to, it means, it means heavy. In, a, in other words, um, there's, there's, an immense amount of value in it. We are to value the Lord. It also means uh, to glorify and to promote. We glorify and promote the Lord. And it also means, this, this, this Hebrew word, um, is to be rich towards. 
So we honor, we glorify, we promote, we, we, we value the Lord, we, we, um, we uh, are rich towards Him with our possessions and with the first fruits of our increase, which, um, talking about our tithes and our offerings, verse 10 says, so, the result is, so, so shall your barns be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. Barns and vats are storage places. Matter of fact, I think the Amplified uses the word storage places there. They're storage places. Our storage places will be filled with plenty or full, and they will burst out and overflow. Filled with plenty and burst out and overflow. That means we get to enjoy an abundance, but there's a bursting out, there's an overflow that we get to be a blessing with. Amen? We get to share, be a blessing with that. Now, the interesting thing about barns and vats is they don't fill themselves by themselves. Barns and vats require our labor, right? If we had a barn, if we had a vat, um, there's only one way to fill it, and that is we have to gather. The farmer gathers the crops, puts it in the barn. The, the vineyard person um, gathers the grapes and puts it in the vat, right? There's, there's, there's work, there's labor, there's, there's effort involved. And so when he says our barns, our storage places will be filled with plenty and burst out and overflow, I will require work. There will be effort involved. Effort. It's not just, it's not just God doing something, it's us working together with him. Him working with us. It's this, it's this partnership. It's this teamwork that He's got for us. Hallelujah. Working together with Him. So that's why He said, first of all, remember my word. Two, number do it. Two, do it. Hallelujah. Trust in me. It's going to require work and effort. Then He said, my son, my daughter, my children. Verse 11 do not despise the chastening or the correction or the teaching and instruction of the Lord, nor detest his correction. For whom the Lord loves, he corrects, just as the Father, the Son, in whom he delights. So there's some things here that will be correction. There's some things here that he's going to begin to, to share with us and teach with us and, and, and some things he's going to, to impart to us that's going to be correction, that's going to be instruction, that, that we're going to have to heed, that we're going to have to trust him, that we're going to have to do in order for a better new year in our lives. Verse 13 says, Happy is the man, the woman, the person who finds wisdom and the person who gets understanding. Why? Why? Blessed and happy. For her, per, her proceeds, the profit, the benefit of wisdom and understanding are better than the profits of silver and better than the gain of fine gold. She is more precious than rubies and all the things that you can desire cannot compare with her, cannot compare with wisdom and understanding. It's very important we get wisdom and get understanding. Why? Because it can get all that. If, they, if we're just given that, then that's all we have, and we don't know how we got it, so how do you get more? And if it disappears, then we're stuck. But if we get wisdom, we get understanding, we can know how to get it. And if we know how to get it, we can help others get it. Amen? Wisdom and understanding. Wisdom and understanding. Happy. Blessed is the person who finds wisdom, gains understanding. Because, verse 16, length of days is in her right hand, and in her left hand riches and honor. Her ways are ways of pleasantness, and all her ways, or all her paths, are peace. Shalom. Shalom. Hallelujah. We talked about that. Shalom. She is a tree of life to those who find her, and happy are those who retain her. So we have to look to find and we will find, hang on, hang on tight. Amen. Don't let it go. So that's my encouragement for us for a better new year. And in regards to our tithes and offerings, we get to honor him. And this is just part of our enjoying and experiencing a better new year ahead of us. Glory to God.